the same. King James Version, Acts chapter 3, starting at the first verse, ending at the 10th verse. And it reads thus. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lay from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked alms. And Peter, fastened his eyes upon him, with John said, Look on us. And he gave Peter to them, expected to receive something of them. The Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaped up, stood and walked, and entered with him into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Please pray with me as I bow our heads and go to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sacred opportunity to talk power to your people. Father God, I ask that you put me in the background, put your son Jesus in the foreground, through dialogue and discourse on the spot high ground, and through the sweet function and the voice of the Holy Spirit, help us to reach high ground. Father God, I ask that you speak to me, speak with me, speak for me, and most importantly, speak through me. Let your tongue replace my tongue and speak the words of light, empowerment, and encouragement. Let someone be transformed, renewed, and revived, starting with me. And the body and that's of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give it up for God for waking us up this morning? Amen. Can we give it up for God for calling us our own body? Put a bread and food on our table, money in our pocket, yeah. gas in our car, money on our metro cars. <laughs> All praise to God. God that created the heavens and the earth. We thank God for the saving grace of God the Son. We thank God for the anointed power of the comforter of us in these last days of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We thank God for these farm volunteers, my mother in the ministry, the vision of Dr. Brittany C. Perkins, her lovely daughter, and my sister in the ministry, Minister Teresa Blackwell. We thank God for my father in the ministry, who uh, spent time nurturing and developing all of these creatures you see before us, the form of Pastor Meredith's daughter. And I thank God for my friend and my brother, and the father of my God, brother, the one and only right brother, Dr. G. Maurice McQuay, our pastor. Can we give it up for our pastor? Amen. And if you don't mind, I just want to thank the very important people, if you don't mind. And I suspect that's each and every one of you because your VIP status was confirmed in John 3.16 where it said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only God and said that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish. But have that one that's life. So give it up to God for thinking you worthy. You and I are worthy of salvation. Amen. I don't want to put one of the ushers, so I'm going to give you the sermon title. The title of the message is Healing and Restoration at the Gate Called Beautiful. Healing and Restoration at the Gate Called Beautiful. Amen. Truly, truly, it's been an honor and blessing. I thank God for pastors' humility. And in giving me an opportunity to share the gospel at the Simonians Baptist Church, and uh, it's been an interesting ride <laughs> sharing the word of God. And I don't count the light, I count the joy. But even though I couldn't envision my 12 size 12 shoes fitting in her ruby red slippers, I do share the sentiments of a little girl named Dorothy when she found herself going to that magical place in Oz going back home, and she said, there's no place like home. All right. Amen. All right. Truly, truly, it's been an honor. We were here Friday with the young people, and I just want to congratulate Sister Sally, Deacon Deaconess Lopez, and all the young people that's involved with the youth ministry. Let's just encourage their heart. Amen. It was so nice working and listening to all the young people. Uh, I didn't get to 
ugliness and became cool beauty. First things first, we need to realize not so much who we are. See, a lot of us get high spin and we think we arrived. Maybe we got a little raise to the job. Maybe you got yourself a little education. Maybe, maybe you got a brand new suit. Hello, somebody. Maybe you got some brand new shoes. Maybe you just got yourself a brand new car. Whatever it is, somehow, some way, you forget from which you came. You forget that you were once laying at the gate for beautiful. You forget that you were crippled by certain problems. You forget that you might have been lost, and all of a sudden, you found. And what happens when we do these things, we lose our vitality, we lose our power, we lose our connection with Christ. We're so heavy bound and we're no earthly good. We're so focused on divinity that we lose touch with our humanity. And then what we realize is that we're really struggling with the ego problem. Negroes with egos is a dangerous thing. Growing up, there's a rap group called NWA. Don't worry, I'm not going to say the word, you know. But you know what it stands for with attitudes. Uh -huh. And they said it was the world's most dangerous group. But I don't believe that there's a more dangerous group than NWA. Yeah. Yeah. And that's NWE. Negroes with egos. Negroes with egos has a problem because each know is something that's very, very, very. Those three letters become a very because it's E G O. Ease God out of the situation. You ease God out of your life. You ease God out of your home. You ease God out of the God forbid. You erase God out of your memory and you think you made it all by yourself. You forget that you went to college on a scholarship. You forget that those old ladies went in their pocket and have bank sales and candy sales and put that money in something known as a scholarship fund to set you somewhere. Yeah. And then when you come back and look down on the brothers and sisters who didn't have the opportunities you had. You look down on the brothers and sisters who might be struggling with homosexuality. You look down on the brothers and sisters who might smell like an alcohol tonight. Look down on the brothers and sisters who put that down and had that money for a strip club. But what you need to do is stop easing God out of the problem and reverse the evil. Embrace God and allow Him to empower you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what I love about this is that when we look at Peter and John, they're doing the right thing. Yeah. What were they doing? Well, they were walking together on their way to church. Yeah. Together. Yeah. 
never look down at anybody. Like my father told me, the only time you look down on somebody is if you're willing to give them a hand to pull them up. But Peter and John was illustrating this, this principle before my mother thought it was seven. And I don't know how many people heard that saying before. But Peter and John is putting this into action. They say, look upon us. 2,000 years later, we have to ask ourselves, when we tell brothers and sisters to look upon us, what will they see? All right. What will they see? All right. Will they see ratchetness or righteousness? What will they see? Will they see obedient lambs or lambs in wolves holding? What will they see? Will they see sisters who are bad and bushy? Or will they see sisters who are saved and saved about the Holy Ghost? What will they see? Will they see people who talk about our saved and filled with the Holy Ghost? Or will they see people who are talking about making money? What will they see? When we say look the prophets, will they see people that's willing to pray all for the people and not pray all the people? What will they see? You got to do like Michael Jackson said, examine yourself. Paul said it best before Michael. He says, don't let a man examine himself. Yeah. And now 2017, we tell the sisters the same thing. Let a woman examine herself. Yeah. And as you examine yourself and have self-reflection and self-analysis, you got to say, what will people see? Uh -huh. I ain't talking about what they see in church. Because yeah. you're going to put on your best. I'm going to put on my best. But what will they see when you fall? Right. In the moments when you got to fall, Jewelry and bling bling and fake or real diamonds. 
these brothers had a caring spirit. And what they were doing, they weren't being selfish. They were being selfless and saying, listen, we don't have what you're looking for. We don't have arms. We don't have the change. We don't have the money. But what we got, baby, is a lot more healthier for you. What we got, baby, is something that's going to keep you, as the young lady will say, this is Kevin, from the inside out. In 1216, Thomas Aquinas was a saint in the Roman Catholic Church. He went and he visited the Pope. And the Pope at the time of his name was Pope Gregory, but they called him Pope Innocent. And Pope Innocent took him on a little trip. And then in the trip, he was showing him all the wealth of the Vatican. He showed him all the stuff that the Vatican sold from Africa, oh, oh, Latin America. Oh, oh, y'all didn't know that? Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, guys. Just tell it like it is. But all the stuff that they stole, borrowed, they was going to get it back, never be worried. But anyway, all the stuff that the Vatican stole, he showed them all the gold, the, the diamonds. And he made a slick comment. You know how people get when they get a little money, they make slick comments. And he said, you know, unlike Peter, who they called the first Pope, he wasn't, well, their religion never like he is. He said, I'm like the first Pope Peter, I cannot say I don't have silver and gold. And Thomas Queen looked at him and said, neither can you say, rise up in the name of Jesus and walk. You see, people get so bent on this prosperity gospel, not realizing that the gospel gives you prosperity. I'm going to say it again. I talk funny sometimes, so I'm going to slow it down. People get so caught up in this prosperity gospel that they lose sight that the gospel gives you prosperity. Now I'm taking shots at any other preacher, whatever God called them, that's between them and the Lord. But I have a problem with the prosperity gospel, I'm going to tell you. I understand the history of it. A lot of the black preachers that preach that, it started with a brother by the name of Father Divine and Daddy Grace. And what these brothers did, I understand to a degree, they were coming out of slavery. They were coming out with our people with disenfranchised, disempowered, had no money, had no shoes on their feet, coming out of depression, which was all over the world. And they said, you know what? The kingdom of God, heaven and earth, is right here. And it's sad because they sold people a pipe dream. All right. Because Jesus said it best, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. Yeah. What good is the money when every day they tell me that the dollar is dropping in value? Yeah. What good is the money when you realize that those dollars that you accumulate are nothing but legal tender notes? And that the real money lies in gold and diamonds? That's why we're always going to war. Oops, I wasn't supposed to say that. That's why we're going to war. Not to liberate people, not to help people, but to liberate those natural resources so we can keep this country going. This is what's called dollars and cents. But see, Jesus said, choose God, not man. In other words, when you choose God, that's where the real treasure lies. I'm not going to say that money is not necessary. If you need money, you better get money because I ain't got enough for you. But when we think about it, the real treasure, our Father owns everything. The earth is the Lord in the fullness thereof. When you think about the blessings, blessings keep falling in your lap. But you gotta keep praising them. You gotta praise your way through. You can't worry about the money and how much money, because at the end of the day, your money can't get funny. And the change can get strange. But when you move on to God's children's hands, everlasting hands, But then they did something that a lot of us gotta be willing to do. Amen. They took him by the right hand, yeah. sound like the right hand of the fellowship, yeah. and lifted him up. Yeah. Took him by the right hand yeah. and lifted yeah. him up. Yeah. That might be the first example of extending the right hand of fellowship. Yeah. They lifted him up. We gotta stop tearing people down. Yeah.
crystallized. Because when you look at Jesus Christ, Christ simply means crystal. And crystal simply means the anointing. So when you offer people an opportunity to get to know Jesus for themselves, they get a fresh anointing. When you tell people to get to know Jesus for themselves, they are right standing with God. When they get to know Jesus, they have a relationship. We move beyond religion and we go into relationship. And when they find out how big it is, they say, I got to know him for myself. Now, once they did this, this was the fulfillment of prophecy. Let me just turn to Isaiah 35, 6 to show you how Jesus was the fulfillment of what was prophesied. And not just Jesus, but his followers, which includes you and I. Isaiah 35, 6 says, Then shall the lame, the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dove sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. So this was prophesied that people who are lame, physically and spiritually, once they get that anointing, once they touch the hem of his garment, they are here. Yeah. Yeah. You see, when this man receives strength and power in his foot and his ankle, that's why I know he had to be a brother. They said he left and he started shouting. And started shouting. Now, I don't think he was tiptoeing. I don't know if he was doing a two step. I don't know if he was doing a pull out stop. But the Bible said he left and started shouting. Now, some folks got a problem with that. And I understand to a degree. But this brother, I said, where he's coming from. Yeah. A lot of people was like, well, what was this the game? Well, it's something so beautiful. We dignified worship was here. We, we have a certain etiquette about ourselves. Uh -huh. we, we politely clap and we politely praise. But the Negro said, no. I've been in this condition since I came out, my heart was warm, and I've been in this for 41 years, and when these men touch the hill, I will leave, I will shout, I will praise God for all my victory. You can be busy and bad as you want, but I will praise God because He's walking me out, He's showing me all the way, He gave me hope and joy and restoration. I'm sorry about this prayer, Lord. I'm sorry that y'all think about Negroes at the temple, at the gate, called beautiful. I'm sorry. But for 41 years, I've been like this. I've already been a spectacle. Uh -huh. You didn't say that when I was begging for money. Right. Yeah. You didn't say that when I was out here every weekday, I was to pray, you won't go to me. So don't say that. Yeah. So, young man, go ahead. Whatever you can tell me, you know, I got paid. 
that was a married girl, so she never had a girl. And I was still living with mom. I had to pay rent, right? so I was like, you need, I'm like, what, what can you really get that would break the bank? I'm like, well, you should tell something. This Negro turned to me, he said, oh, I don't really like KFC. I like Whippies. <laughs> I said, the Negro, you should go with that. <laughs> but I said all that to say this. What I love about this man, his friends did uh, not the greatest job, yeah. but they had enough sense yeah. to place him at the temple at the gate called Beautiful. Yeah. Maybe they didn't have the wherewithal to take him inside. Maybe they didn't think they were worthy to come inside themselves. Yeah. But they had enough sense. And if I use my spiritual imagination, I'm sure that man might have saw some healing going on. He probably heard about Jesus. And maybe that day he was like, yo, give me, give me to that temple. And Jesus passed by. And Jairus intercepted. Uh -huh. Talking about his daughter. All right, all right. But before Jairus got intercepted, the woman with his blood touched right. the head of his arm. Jesus was being distracted. Maybe he was dead on the day that Jesus went crazy in the temple and went behind and said, Y'all turn my father's house. Bigger, 
there's something going on. And that guy, to be honest, he's from where I live at. He's from Jamaica, Queens. So it wasn't like he always had a silver spoon in his mouth. He wasn't like rich, rich. His father was an immigrant. True story. Frederick Trump was his name. They changed it to Trump. Now he came to Trump car. Something to think about. So instead of us laughing at Donald Trump, we need to pray for that man. Pray that God touches him. Pray that God guides him. Pray that God gives him a fresh anointing. And I know some of you are mad, but the truth is the Bible tells us to pay the magistrates. Because I don't know about you, I don't have anywhere to go. I live in the United States of America. So every day when I hear this guy talking in his talk, I say, Lord, give him wisdom and guidance because I'm not trying to die. But the real thing is to know that Jesus is the real thing. Yeah, yeah. I think the Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, yeah, I was listening to Marvin before I came here, forgive me. And Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell said something that resonates when I think about God. They were talking about romantic love, Abel's love, but I'm talking about that copy love. And these are the lyrics, I'm not going to say it. They said, there's nothing, oh, this is how they say it, ain't nothing. Like a real big thing. Ain't nothing like a real big love. And then he said these lyrics, very poetic if you listen to it. I play my game, a fantasy. I pretend, but I know the reality. I'm sorry. I need the shelter of the arms to comfort me. I need your love. But yet I hear, cause they don't move me, and they don't move me like me. Ain't nothing like the real thing, Jesus. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Ain't nothing like the real thing, Jesus. Ain't nothing like the real thing. I play my game of fantasy. I can say, but I know where the reality. I need the shelter of the arms to come for me. No other sound is quite the same as his name. No touch can do half as much to make you feel better. Add a shot, because y'all was clapping with me. I was feeling it. I said, it's going to be great. Let's pass it up. I said, you know what? I'm going to sit on the floor. But I said, I'll have to say this. Before Kirk Franklin said these things, I feel like once this man got here, once he had an encounter with Jesus, once he had something on the inside, he was able to celebrate on the outside. Once he got his hair in touch, that man, he could have walked for 41 years, stood up, he got a scratch of that, he felt good, he might even feel a little shitty. Thank <laughs> you. 
He said, no, you feel it yourself. See, in summer school, and I said, oh, shucks. And I was frustrated. So my father was saying, because he wanted me to work at that so I had to go to summer school. Next year, they gave me a certificate. Yeah, I said, why did he keep giving me this guy? He got this guy. We don't get along. Still was bumping heads. He filled me in the 10th grade. I had to go take a course for most of them. He ain't going to summer school every summer. 11th grade, it got so bad that he called my home, said 11, because he said I was cut. Okay, I'll go right home, I was cut. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I met 26 years later. I was cut. Sorry, I got you involved with that. I was cut. Hello, I was doing the song. Thank you for the spirit. So I was, I was, I was like, I didn't cut. I was going to show up. I was going to do this. But I didn't cut, I didn't cut. And with it, and with it, I had a face of music. And my mother and grandfather and father said, if you get a woman cut part, that don't cut part of the time, let's go on a date. And I was like, no, I think this is inaccurate. These computers are having glitches. I was talking about glitches. I was having my time. I said, they're having glitches. They said, I'm not good at glitch. And my father said, get a woman cut part, don't cut your tail. But we used to say, I failed the game. And Mr. Cook said something, and it kind of it kind of hurt my feelings. Because it's one thing to teach a student a lesson. But it seems like he, he took personal joy. And he said, you know, I'm going to teach you a lesson. You're going to learn about life dealing with me. I said, really? Because I ain't learned much biology. And I didn't say that. OK, I didn't say that. All right, all right. OK, I didn't say that. <laughs> he said, you're going to learn a lesson with me. He said, because you're going to learn how to conduct yourself. You're going to learn. Because he said, because what you got to realize is at the end of the day, I'm still getting paid. I'm still going to make money. So if you don't want to learn, so you. I said, if I am trying to learn, it's just I don't understand it. He said, yeah, well, tell you what, it's going to take a miracle for you to graduate from high school. He said, do you believe in miracles? I said, yeah, that's what CD does talk about. Of course I believe in miracles. He said, it's going to take a miracle to get you out of high school. Well, he was to say, I prayed, and I graduated on time. I said, oh, that's to say this. In that struggle that I was going through, I was president of the youth association, I was president of this organization, that organization, as a young man. I, I was still dealing with the struggles of life, still dealing with issues of bullying, still dealing with teachers being negative. But I remember something my grandmother said. She always told me to read the 23rd Psalms. The 23rd Psalms. Well, needless to say, four years ago, I got honored by the United Federation of Teachers as a teacher in good standing, a teacher who's been working for 10 years making a difference to kids' lives. I'm not saying that to right. This is the point I want to make. And while I was at the table, I was shaking, had my little tech suit on, shaking people's hands, meeting and greeting. They put me at a table, and I looked, and I saw Mr. Cook. <laughs> and we looked at each other. And Mr. Cook said, Dr. McGuigan? I said, Mr. Cook? He said, yeah, what are you doing here? I said, I'm, I'm receiving an award today. He said, oh yeah, for what? I'm going to say for biology. I want to say, I said, what is it? I said, I'll be honored as an outstanding teacher. He said, oh yeah? I said, yeah, what are you here for? He said, I'm being honored because I'm retiring. And I said, Lucky kids. So, I said, so we looked at each other and I said, you know, I thank you for the lessons you taught me. He said, Doctor, when I was doing that, I just wanted you to be a better person. And I said, I said that. He said, how did biology work out for you? How did social school work out? And I said, I'm here. But then as we were talking, and he went and he ate, and he said, you know what, don't call me Mr. Cook. My name is Norman. And we shook hands. I thought about something my grandmother said. I thought about the 23rd Psalms. And it simply said, I'll make a table before you in the presence of the enemy. So you ain't got to worry about nothing. All you got to do is keep pushing. Pray until something happens. Don't let the enemies to push you. You need structure. You need value. You need prosperity. That's the real gospel. Don't give up on God because he won't give up. Don't pay for all. 
gospel has been preached. Amen. Perhaps there's someone here who has not given their life to the Lord. Man, woman, boy, or girl, we offer Christ to you today. Is there one today? We pause now to give an opportunity to anyone who has not given their life to the Lord. 